This next section will cover the concrete questions. First of all, characteristics and properties. Number one, which aggregate is best for pumping concrete? Is it coarse, crushed, rounded, or large? Which aggregate is best for pumping concrete? It would be rounded. Aggregate, by the way, is the largest particles that you will find in c concrete, such as stone. Number two, concrete, other than type 3 high early strength, should be maintained above 50 degrees Fahrenheit and in moist condition for at least how many days after placement? Is it 28 days, 7 days, 2 days, or 14 days? Concrete, other than type 3 high early strength, should be maintained above 50 degrees Fahrenheit and in a moist condition for at least how many days after placement? Seven days. Number three, the chemical used to speed up curing of concrete during, stamp, during damp conditions is ammonium sulfate, sodium chloride, calcium carbonate, or calcium chloride. The chemical used to speed up curing of concrete during damp conditions is calcium chloride. Number four, what type of concrete is the slowest curing? Is it type four, type two, type five, or type one? The type of concrete that is the slowest curing? And the answer is type four. Number five, and these are these questions will be on tools. Number five, what tool is used to smooth concrete or finish and flatten a slab? Is it the hawk, the derby, the edger, or the pointed steel trowel? The tool used to smooth concrete or finish and flatten a slab is called derby. Number six. What should one use for non-porous smooth finish? Is it perlite, blown-on acoustic, steel trowel, or floated sand plaster? What should one use for non-porous smooth finish? A steel trowel. The next section is on mix. Number seven. Mortar is mixed for 10 minutes, seven minutes, four minutes or two minutes. Mortar is mixed for four minutes. True or false, a commonly used concrete mix is one part cement, two parts sand, four parts gravel. The answer is true. One part cement, two parts sand, four parts gravel is a common used concrete mix. Number nine is a true-false question. Visqueen, sand, and wire mesh are prepared before pouring concrete slab above ground. And the answer is true. Visqueen, sand, and wire mesh are prepared before pouring concrete slab above ground. Number 10 is also a, a yes-no question. What happens when too much salt is in the concrete mix? Will the mix freeze quickly? No. Will the mix set slower? No. Will the mix be weaker? Yes. Will the compressive strength increase? No. The next section is on pouring questions. Number 11, true or false? Number 11 says, if you cannot pour concrete, concrete beam over a wide doorway in one continuous pour, you should make the construction joint vertically and more or less in the center of the opening. If you cannot pour concrete beam over a wide doorway in one continuous pour, you should make the construction joint vertically and more or less in the center of the opening. 
that is true. Number 12. What is done after concrete is poured? Is it darbied, screed, bull floated, or tamped? What is done after concrete is poured? It is screeded. Number 13. The maximum spacing for anchor bolts and sills is 6 feet on center and within 12 inches of the ends. Is that true or false? The maximum spacing for anchor bolts and sills is 6 feet on center and within 12 inches of the ends. The answer is true. Number 14. Anchor bolts must be embedded in concrete or reinforced masonry at least 7 inches, 9 inches, 8 inches, or 6 inches. Anchor bolts must be embedded in concrete or reinforced concrete at least 7 inches. Number 15. With what do you attach a sill to concrete? With what do you attach a sill to concrete? Is it with adhesive, masonry nails, bolts, or mortar? And the answer is bolts are used to attach a sill to concrete. Number 16. Basement concrete walls require a minimum test of 30 days at 2,000 PSI, 3,000 PSI, 4,000 PSI, or 1,000 pounds per square inch PSI? The answer is 4,000 PSI. The amount of pounds per square inch basement concrete walls require a minimum test of 30 days of this strength. 17. A, a high slump test indicates too much water or too little water. A high slump test indicates too much water or too little water. The answer is too much water. Slump is measured in inches. The lower the sample falls, the higher the slump. Number 18 is a true-false question. The slump test indicates the wetness or dryness of concrete. The slump test indicates the wetness or dryness of concrete. The answer is true. The following questions are about the Uniform Building Code. Number 19. The minimum coverage for concrete permanently placed against dirt or the earth is 2 inches, 3 inches, 1 and a half inches, or 6 inches. The minimum coverage for concrete permanently placed against dirt or the earth is 3 inches. Number 20. What is the minimum thickness for a slab on grade? Is it 5 inches, 2 and a half inches, 4 inches, or 3 inches? What is the minimum thickness for a slab on grade? The answer is 3 inches. 21. What is the recommended slope for a four-foot sidewalk? Is it 7%, 10%, 3%, or 5%? What is the recommended slope for a four-foot sidewalk? And the answer is 5%. Number 22 is true-false. Floor post should be set on a concrete post base. Floor post should be set on a concrete post base. That is true. Number 23 is yes or no. Which of the following statements is generally true? Footings are made as deep as the foundation wall is thick. And that is true. Footings are made as deep as the foundation wall is thick. The total width of the footing is twice the thickness of the foundation wall. The total width of the footing is twice the thickness of the foundation wall. The answer is true. 
And the last question in this section is question 24. The minimum clearance for rebar embedded in concrete is 3 inches, 1 inch, 2 inches, or 6 inches. The minimum clearance for rebar embedded in concrete is 2 inches. This next set of questions covers masonry questions. First of all, characteristics and, characteristics and properties. Number one, what type mortar is medium high strength, used where high compressive strength is not important, but where bond and lateral strength are? What type of mortar is medium high strength, used where high compressive strength is not important, but where bond and lateral strength are? Is it S, O, N, or M? The answer is S. What type mortar is medium low strength used in a non-load-bearing interior wall and load-bearing wall in which compression is not greater than 100 psi and exposure is not severe? What type mortar is medium low strength used in a non-load-bearing interior wall and load-bearing walls in which compression is not greater than 100 psi and exposure is not severe? Is it O, N, M, or S? The answer is O. Number three, what type mortar is medium strength used in exposed masonry above ground, for example, parapet walls and chimneys, and withstands severe weathering? What type mortar is medium strength used in exposed masonry above grade, for example, parapet walls and chimneys, and withstands severe weathering? Is it M, N, S, or O? And the answer is N. 4. What type mortar is high strength used for reinforced brick masonry and plain masonry below grade, for example, foundations, with high compressive strength. What type of mortar is high strength used for reinforced brick masonry and plain masonry below grade, for example, foundations, with high compressive strength? Is it N, M, O, or S? And the answer is M. Number five, in any area subject to earthquake damage, the strongest and most durable mortar is in an er area subject to earthquake damage. The strongest and most durable mortar is O, M, K, or N, and the answer is M. Number six, a tool that has one face that is shaped like a chisel for trimming brick or stone is called a sledge, a drywall hammer, a ball peen hammer, or a mason's hammer. A tool that one face that has one face that is shaped like a chisel for trimming brick or stone is called a mason's hammer. Number seven, to break stone or block, what tool would you use? A bull float, a pointing trowel, a mason's scrutch, or a darby. To break stone or block, what tool would you use? And the answer is mason's scrutch. Eight, what is used to drill a hole in a brick or masonry? What is used to drill a hole in brick or masonry? Is it a carbide bit, an auger bit, a hole saw, or a countersink bit? And the answer is a carbide bit. Number nine, what is used to clean out mortar joints before pointing? What is used to clean out mortar joints before pointing? Is it a cape chisel, a bricklayer's hammer, a bricklayer's trowel, or a hawk? The answer is a cape chisel. Number 10. 
When mortar stiffens up, what should be done? Moisten it, throw it out, add aggregate, or add sand. What should you do when mortar stiffens up? You should throw it out. Number 11 is on anchor bolts. True or false? If a footing and a wall are the same block cell size in steel construction, make sure the connections between the wall and the footing are secure. And the answer is true. If a footing and a wall are the same block cell size in steel construction, make sure the connections between the wall and the footing are secure. Number 12 is true false. A strap from a masonry wall to a wood joint is used to hold the wall to the floor, to provide shear strength, to provide vibration resistance, or for decoration only. A strap from a masonry wall to a wood joint is used to provide vibration resistance. The answer is false. The strap is used to hold the wall to the floor. Number 13, true or false. The function of the ledger is to hang the 2 inch by 12 inch floor joist. The function of the ledger is to hang the 2 by 12 floor joist. The answer is true. Number 14. What should be done to a recently constructed masonry wall if it looks like rain? Should you, should you wet it down, parge the top, do nothing special, or cover it with canvas? What should you do to a recently constructed masonry wall if it looks like rain? You should cover it with a canvas. The next questions are on grout. Number 15, yes and no question. A leak in a masonry wall may be caused by crumbling, yes, gaps in the mortar, yes, a crack, yes. A leak in a masonry wall may be caused by crumbling, gaps in the mortar, or a crack. Number 16. True or false? You should apply grout on wet concrete masonry. You should apply grout on wet concrete masonry. The answer is false. You apply the grout to dry masonry. Number 17. How much coverage would you need when applying mortar to masonry block? Is it full coverage, one half coverage, three quarter coverage, or one quarter coverage. How much coverage would you need when applying mortar to masonry block? And the answer is full coverage. Mortar should be spread fully on all contact surfaces, which is called full bedding. Number eight, 18. What type of joint is best suited for areas with heavy rainfall? What type of joint is best suited for areas with heavy rainfall. Is it a raked joint, a concave joint, a V joint, or a weathered joint? The answer is a weathered joint. The next question, number 19, is on walls. It's a yes-no question. A good idea for checking the core of masonry wall is to determine the grout overlaps? Yes. Obstructions? Yes. Alignment of rebar? Yes. A good idea for checking the core of a masonry wall is, is to determine grout overlaps, obstructions, and the alignment of the rebar. The next set of questions are in chimneys and fireplaces. Number 20. A draft a downdraft in a chin chimney is caused by too much soot, chimney is too low, chimney is cracked, or the chimney is too high. A downdraft in a chimney is caused by 
the chimney is too low. 21. What is the minimum clearance for a masonry fireplace to wood framing members? What is the minimum clearance for from a masonry fireplace to wood framing members? Is it one inch, one quarter inch, two inches, or four inches? The answer is two inches. Number 22. How thick must unlined masonry chimneys be? How thick must unlined masonry chimneys be? Is it 10 inches, 6 inches, 4 inches, or 8 inches? The answer is 8 inches. Number 23 is true or false. The best design for a chimney and a roof is to be 2 feet above the peak of the roof. The best design for a chimney and a roof is to be two feet above the peak of the roof. And the answer is true. The following questions deal with brick. Question 24. Building brick has more of an advantage over face brick due to labor, size of a material, strength, or cost. Building brick has more of an advantage over face brick due to strength. Number 25, it's true or false. The size of a standard brick is 8, in it, eight inches by 2 and a quarter inches by 3 and 3 quarter inches. The standard size of a brick is true. It's 8 inches by 2 and a quarter inches by 3 and 3 quarter inches. Number 26, true or false. The best time and way to remove mortar droppings out of brick is with your hand when it is dry. The best time and way to remove mortar droppings on a brick is with your hand when it is dry. That's false. You should remove it with a trowel when it is almost dry. 27. Yes or no. What kind of brick is used for exterior walls or above the ground? Would you use W, I'm sorry, would you use MW, which means moderate weather? And the answer would be yes. Would you use NW, which means no weather? And the answer would be no. Would you use SW, which means severe weather? And the answer is yes. The kind of brick to use for exterior walls or above the ground is either moderate weather or severe weather. Number 28. What kind of brick is used in a planter? Is it S, MW, NW, or SS? What kind of brick is used in a planter? The answer is MW, which means moderate weather. 29. What should be done with, with clay brick before being laid? What should be done with clay brick before being laid? Should it be stored uncovered, dried, stored covered, or moistened? The answer is moistened. And now the plumbing section. Number one. is a multiple choice question. What would you use to connect two gas lines that are located in a concealed or limited space and are close together? How do you connect two gas lines that are located in a concealed or limited space and are close together? Would you use bushing, a ground joint union, or a right-left coupling? The answer is you would use a right-left coupling to connect two gas lines that are located in a concealed or limited space and are close together. Number two, multiple choice. A horizontal run of a flue pipe should not exceed what percent of the vertical run? Is it 44, 75, 50, or 33 percent? The horizontal run of a flue pipe should not exceed what percent of the vertical run? The answer is 75%. Number three is a true-false question. 
Hardened copper is preferred to soft copper pipe in some applications because it is cheaper than galvanized. Hardened copper is preferred to soft copper pipe in some applications because it is cheaper than galvanized. The answer is false. It's more durable. Number four. What do you use to join two pipes of unequal sizes? What do you use to join two pipes of unequal sizes? Is it a bushing, a tapping tee, a union, or a bell reducer? The answer is a bell reducer. A bell reducer is used to join two pipes of unequal sizes. Number five, multiple choice. What are the most common ferrous pipes? Is it steel and iron, PVC, or copper? The most common ferrous pipe is steel and iron. Actually, ferrous means iron. Number six, multiple choice. A water supply pipe entering a building should be vertical, sloped away from the supply, sloped toward the supply, or horizontal. A water supply pipe entering a building should be horizontal. Number seven. The proper fitting for a galvanized pipe is unthreaded, brass, copper, or threaded. The proper fitting for a galvanized pipe is threaded. Number eight. When single hub cast iron pipe is installed vertically, the hub aim should be in what direction? When single hub cast iron pipe is installed vertically, the hub aim should be in what direction? Is it at an angle, or down, or up, or horizontally? The answer is up. Number nine. Which way should be the holes face on perforated drain pipe when installed horizontally? Which way should the holes face on perforated drainage pipe when installed horizontally? Is it sideways, down, or up? And the answer is down. Number 10. When setting up a galvanized water line, what should you use to hold it in place? When setting up a galvanized water line, what should you use to hold it in place? Is it a staple, a union, or a clamp and coupling? And the answer is, when setting up a galvanized water pipe, you should use clamps and couplings to hold it in place. Number 11. Regular plumbing pipes can be used for drains only, waste only, vents only, or both vents and drains. Regular plumbing pipes can be used for vents and drains. Number 12 is a yes no question in three parts. Do hot and cold lines converge at the water heater? The answer is no. Do hot and cold lines converge at the washing machine? The answer is no. Do hot and cold lines converge at the dishwasher? The answer is no. 13. Which of these is a ferrous pipe? Is it brass, copper, lead, or iron? And the answer is iron. Do you remember that from a previous question? 14. How do you connect galvanized iron pipe to copper pipe? Connecting galvanized iron pipe to copper pipe. Do you use a copper solder joint, a welding, a galvanized union, or brass coupling? To connect galvanized iron pipe to copper pipe, you use a brass coupling. 15. How is a plumbing nipple specified? Is it by the diameter or the diameter and the length 
or is it the length and the diameter, or is it just the length? A, a plumbing nipple is specified by diameter and then by length. Number 16. What do you use to connect two pipes separated by a short distance? What do you use to connect two pipes separated by a short distance? Is it an elbow, a nipple, a coupling, a union, or a bell reducer? To connect two pipes separated by a short distance, you use a union. Number 17. In a residential steam heating unit, how many pounds of pressure will cause the pressure regulator to pop? In a residential steam heating unit, how many pounds of pressure will cause the pressure regulator to pop? Is it 35 pounds per pressure? Is it 15, 5, or 25? And the answer is, it's 15 pounds of pressure will cause a pressure regulator to pop. Number 18 is a true-false question. Four urinals can be hooked up to a two-inch vent. Four urinals can be hooked up to a two-inch vent. The answer is true. One urinal equals six units. So if you have four urinals, that would be four times six or a total of 24 fixture units. The maximum for a 24 fixture unit that can be used would be per, per two inches of vent. So in this case, the 24 would be sufficient for this two inch vent. Number 19, the minimum size for a tub and overflow vent is one and a half inches, two inches, three inches or one inch. The minimum size for a tub and overflow vent is one and a half inches. 20. What tool do you use to clear pipe? Do you use a hickey, a union, a closet auger, or a fish tape? What tool do you use to clear pipe? You would use a closet auger. If you can remember that a water closet is a toilet. So a closet auger would be used to clear pipe. 21. What best describes a copper fitting? Is it inexpensive? Is it threaded at both ends? Does it, has to, does it have to be soldered at one end? Or that it can't use any kind of coupling? What best describes a copper fitting? The answer is, it has to be soldered at one end. Number 22 is a true-false question. On a sewer line, vertical stacks are connected to a hub looking up. On a sewer line, vertical stacks are connected to a hub looking up. The answer is true. 23. What kind of equipment do you use to install a drainage or a sewer system to an existing road? What kind of equipment do you use to install a drainage or a sewer system in an existing road? Do you use a crane, a skip loader, a grater, or a backhoe? The answer is you would use a, black, a backhoe to install drainage or sewer systems. Number 24 is a three-part yes-no question. What does a pressure relief valve on a water heater respond to? What does a pressure re relief valve on a water heater respond to? Does it respond to pressure? Yes, it does. Does it respond to temperature? Yes. Does it respond to cold? The answer is no. 25. What valve is used to bring pressure down to normal? What valve is used to bring pressure down to normal? Is it a globe, an angle valve, a reducing valve, or a gate valve? The answer is to bring pressure down to normal, you use a reducing 
valve. 26. A pressure relief valve vented outside the building should be pointed downward and how far from the ground? I'm sorry, how far above the ground? A relief pressure valve vented outside the building should be pointed downward and how far above the ground? Is it 6 to 18 inches? 6 to 24 inches, 12 to 36 inches, or 12 to tw 24 inches? The answer is a pr pressure relief valve vented outside the building should be pointed downward and 6 to 24 inches above the ground. 27. What sort of shutoff valve should be used between two buildings? Should you use a full way valve? a bypass valve or a gate valve? What sort of shutoff valve should be used between two buildings? And the answer is a full way valve. 28. How many bathtubs can be hooked up to a two inch vent? How many bathtubs may be hooked up to a two inch vent? Is it 18, 14, 12, or 16? The answer is 12 bathtubs can be hooked up to a 2-inch vent. Since one tub equals two units, you take the 24, divide by 2, which equals 12 tubs. Number 29. Which is generally recognized as the most satisfactory type of toilet design? What is generally de recognized as the most satisfactory type of toilet design? Is it a siphon jet, a wash down, a blow out, or a reverse trap? What is generally recognized as the most satisfactory type of toilet design? A siphon jet. Thirty one. These questions are about the uniform plumbing code. Thirty one. The maximum allowable distance to an exit in a building without a sprinkler is one hundred feet, a hundred feet, one hundred and twenty five feet, or two hundred feet. The maximum allowable distance to an exit in a building without sprinklers is one hundred and fifty feet. Thirty two. What is the maximum allowable distance to an exit in a building equipped with approved automatic sprinklers? What is the maximum allowable distance to an exit in a building equipped with approved automatic sprinklers? Is it 100 feet, 125 feet, 150 feet, or 200 feet? And the answer is the allowable distance to an exit in a building equipped with approved automatic sprinklers is 200 feet. Number 33. The maximum size for a shower trap is 1 inch, 1 and a half inches, 2 inches, or 3 inches. The minimum size for a shower trap is 2 inches. 34. What is the water flow from a residential sink faucet? What is the water flow from a residential sink faucet? Is it 4.5 gallons per minute? 2.5 gallons per minute, 5 gallons per minute, or 3 gallons per minute. The water flow from a residential sink faucet should be 4.5 gallons per minute. And the last question, number 35. The maximum temperature permitted for liquids contained in pipes embedded in concrete walls is? Is it 180 degrees, 150 degrees, 120 degrees, or 90 degrees? The maximum temperature permitted for liquids contained in pipes embedded in concrete walls is 150 degrees. The next section is on HVAC, heating, ventilating, air conditioning. The first section is on ventilation. Number one, the passage of air supply should have an opening at least one square inch per 1,000 BTUH one square inch per 5,000 BTUH, one half inch per 5 BTUH, 
or one foot per 2,000 BTUH. The BTUH is British thermal units per hour. So the passage of an air supply should have an opening at least one square inch per 1,000 BTUH. Number two is a true-false question. Exfiltration is the heat loss in a building due to air leakage. Exfiltration is the heat loss in a building due to air leakage. The answer is false. The answer is infiltration is the heat loss in a building due to air leakage. There is no such thing as exfiltration. Number three is a four-part yes-no question. Which of these is embedded in concrete? Which of these ducts is embedded in concrete? Is it steel? Yes, they can be. Galvanized coating? Yes. Paper fiber? No. Aluminum coated? Yes. So the kinds of ducts that you can embed in concrete are steel and galvanized coated or aluminum coated, but you can't use paper fiber. Number four is a true-false question. As an energy regulation, an automatic damper is required for exhaust air ducts. As an energy regulation, an automatic damper is required for exhaust air ducts. And the answer is true. Or you could use a back draft damper. Number five, the duct which has the least resistance is half round, square, rectangular, or round. The duct which has the least resistance is a round duct. Next section is on heating. Number six, what ducts are in in concrete slab, I'm sorry, when ducts are in concrete slab, the proper type of furnace is an upflow high boy, a gravity furnace, an upflow low boy, or a downflow furnace. When ducts are embedded in concrete slab, the proper type of furnace is a downflow type furnace. Number seven, heating ducts should be installed, should be insulated everywhere, only where exposed, only where enclosed, or at the plenum. Heating ducts should be insulated everywhere. Number eight, where should a hot air furnace return be located? Is it near a window, near a thermostat, by an inside wall or high up on an inside wall? Where should a hot fur air furnace return be located? It should be located by an inside wall. Number nine, what kind of heater can you use in a residence that does not need a chimney? Is it a wood stove, an electric stove, a gas type or a type K oil burner. What kind of heater can you use in a residence that does not need a chimney? And the answer is electric, obviously doesn't need a chimney. Number 10 is a three part yes, no question. If an oil furnace will not ignite, what might be the cause? Would it be that the power is not on? No. Would it be that the air there's error in the oil line. The answer would be no. Would it be if the thermostat might be defective? And the answer is yes. If an oil furnace will not ignite, the probable cause is a thermostat is defective. Number 11 is a four-part yes-no question. When servicing a gas burner, what would be the most likely reason why the blower motor does not start? When servicing a gas burner, what would be the most likely reason the blower motor does not start? Would it be that the fuse is out? Yes or no? The answer is yes. 
How about bearings on the blower were tight and need oil? And that would also be yes. Would it be that the thermocouple was not generating enough electricity? And the answer would be no. Would it be that the thermoset is defective? And the answer is yes. When servicing a gas burner, what would be the most likely reason the blower motor does not start? And it could be that the fuse is out, the bearings on the blower were tight and need oil, or that the thermostat is defective. Number 12, where are pads located in a forced unit air system? Where are filter pads located in a forced warm air unit system? Is it inside the plenum, inside the duct system, at the bottom of the unit, or outside the house? Where are filter pads located in a forced warm air unit system? They're inside the duct system. 13. The register for a gravity heater is located at eye level, near a baseboard, near a window, or near a ceiling. The register for a gravity heater is located near a baseboard. 14. What kind of furnace is used in an attic or crawl space? Is it a bottom furnace, a low boy downflow, a high boy top flow, or a horizontal furnace? What kind of furnace is used in an attic or a crawl space? The answer is a horizontal furnace. Number 15 is a true-false question. A radiator should be located near the outside wall under a window. A radiator should be located near an outside wall under a window. And the answer is true. That's because air current from the window will convey the heat into the room. Number 16 is a true-false question. The access opening and passageway for a furnace mounted below the floor is two and a half feet by two and a half feet. The answer is true. The access opening and passageway for a furnace mounted below the furnace if below the floor is two and a half feet by two and a half feet. The next set of questions are on air conditioning. Number 17. A 60,000 BTU cooling unit has how many tons of cooling capacity? A 60,000 BTU cooling unit has how many tons of cooling capacity? Is it 30, 5, 60, or 2? And the answer is 5. An air conditioning unit will provide 12,000 BTUHs. That's British thermal units per hour for every ton. So 60,000 divided by 12,000 would equal five tons. 18. What kind of piping should be used for an air conditioning unit? For example, from the compressor to the unit. What kind of piping should be used for an air conditioning unit? Is it copper, aluminum, steel, or galvanized? The answer is copper piping should be used for an air conditioning unit. For example, from the compressor to the unit. Number 19. What is the black wire in an air conditioning unit system? What is the black wire in an air conditioning unit system? Is it not used? Is it used for the ground? Is it neutral? Or is it the power lead? And the answer is the black wire is a power lead. Number 20 is a true-false question. The return on an air conditioning system should be placed close to the thermostat. The return on an air conditioning system should be placed close to the thermostat. The answer is true. Number 21 is a true-false question. To minimize no noise, the compressor of a central air conditioning unit should be located on a slab outside the house. To minimize noise, the compressor for an air for a central air conditioning unit should be located in a slab outside the house? The answer is true. Number 22. 
A builder can show compliance with energy building requirements by fleet averaging, provided that approved calculation methods of the point system have been used. True or false? A builder can show compliance with energy building requirements by fleet averaging, provided that approved calculation methods of the point system have been used. And the answer is true. Fleet averaging means to use average figures for all units in the same division. Number 23 is a four-part yes-no question. What could cause an air conditioning unit to run constantly? Could it be that the on-off switch is defective? The answer is no. Could it be that the refrigerant is below standard? The answer would be yes. Could it be a filter problem? Answer is no. Could it be a defective starting capacitor? The answer is no. Next two questions are on filters. Number 24, how is a permanent air filter cleaned? Do you use carbon dioxide with warm water? Do you beat it or do you shake it? The answer is to clean a permanent air filter you use warm water. 25. A disposable air filter can be thrown away, brushed clean, cleaned with solvent, or cleaned with air. A disposable air filter should be, of course, thrown away, thus the term disposable. The next section is on solar. The maximum, s number 25, 26, the maximum square footage of solar panels allowed on a roof is 5,000. The maximum square footage of solar panels allowed on a roof is 5,000 square feet. The answer is false. There's no maximum. 27 is a true-false question. Solar collectors should be mounted on a flat roof with a minimum angle of geographic latitude. Solar collectors should be mounted on a flat roof with a minimum angle of geog geographical latitude, and the answer is true. Number 28 is a true-false question. When a flat solar collector is mounted on a roof, this is an example of a passive system. When a flat solar collector is mounted on a roof, this is an example of a passive system. The answer is false. It's an example of an active system because it relies on physical objects such as a solar collector. A passive system would rely on the sun. 29. Where would you mount a solar collector on the ground? Is it true north or at a 30 degree tilt or on a concrete pad or protected from the wind? Where would you mount a solar collector on the ground? The answer would be on a concrete pad. This next section will be on drywall and plastering. Number one is a true-false question. A firewall is required between the dwelling and an attachment. A firewall is required between a dwelling and an attachment, and that is true. Number two, another name for drywall is wallboard. True or false? Another name for drywall is wallboard, and the answer is true. Number three, which is not considered when hanging drywall? Is it plumbing, insulation, framing, or setbacks? Which is not considered when hanging drywall? The answer is setbacks. Number four, one advantage of sheetrock screws is, is that it's rust resistant or low cost or availability or fastening strength. One advantage of a sheetrock screw is fastening strength. Number five, which side do you score first when cutting wallboard before cutting the other side? Is it the rough side, the smooth side, or either side? 
Which side do you score first when cutting wall board before cutting the other side? And the answer is the smooth side. Number six, what is the standard length of a drywall stud? Is it eight, 86 and a half inches, 102 inches, 92 and a quarter inches, or 106 inches? What is the standard length of a drywall stud? And the answer is 92 and a quarter inches. Number seven is a true-false question. The primary disadvantage of drywall is that when green lumber dries, nail heads tend to pop up. The primary disadvantage of drywall is that when green lumber dries, nail heads tend to pop up. And the answer is true. Number eight, the best nail for drywall is cement coated, regular plasterboard, corrugated shank or chemically etched. The best nail for drywall is chemically etched because it is rust resistant. This next set of questions on plastering. Number nine. Which of these materials would you use to create texture? Is it putty, ready mix gypsum, neat plaster, or wood fiber gypsum? Which of these materials would you use to create texture? And the answer is wood fiber gypsum. Number 10. Gunite is used in building swimming pools, footings, slabs, or retaining walls. Gunite is used in building swimming pools. Number 11. The minimum number of plaster coats is 2 three, four, or five. The minimum number of plastic plaster coats is two. Twelve. What should be done first on an exterior plaster wall? What should be done first on an exterior plaster wall? Do you hang the doors first? The jams and windows first? The brown coat? Or doing the flat work? What should be done first on an exterior plaster wall should be the jams and the windows. Number 13 is a true-false question. The purpose of a weep screed is to relieve moisture pressure or separate potable water from containment underwater or to protect gutter and downspouts or to give a plaster a base to work with. The purpose of a weep screed is to relieve moisture pressure. Number 14 is a three-part yes-no questions. Which of these is a good decorative finish? Would neat plaster be a good decorative finish? Yes or no? No. What about wood fiber plaster? No, that wouldn't be a good decorative finish either. What about bond plaster? No, that would not also be a good decorative finish. None of these would be. Number 15 is a multiple choice question. What tool would you use to carry grout that will be used to patch a small hole? What tool would you use to carry grout that will be used to patch a small hole? Is it spot board, a mason scratch, a hawk, or a pulling board? What tool would you use to carry grout to use to patch a small hole? You would use a spot board. A hawk is used for heavier amounts. Number 16 is a multiple choice question. Which of these, which of these is the hardest plaster? Gauge plaster, bond plaster, gypsum keen cement, or prepared gypsum plaster? Which of these is the hardest plaster? The answer would be gypsum keen cement. Number 17 is a true-false question. For a non-porous surface such as concrete, the best choice for the first coat of plaster would be neat plaster. For a non-porous surface such as concrete, the best choice for the first coat of plaster would be neat 
plaster? The answer was false. The best would be a bond type plaster. Number 18. The final coat of plaster is made of sand, neat plaster, ready mix plaster, or wood fiber plastic plaster. The final coat of plaster is made of neat plaster. Number 19. What is the total thickness required for the first two coats over plasterboard? What is the total thickness required for the first two coats over plasterboard? Is it five sixths of an inch, one half inch, three quarters of an inch, or five eighths of an inch? The total thickness required for first two coats over plasterboard is one half inch. That completes the section on drywall and plastering. This last section is on roofing. Question number one. Cap and bottom flashing is used on a chimney, a valley, a ridge, or a hip. Cap and bottom flashing is used on a chimney. Number two is a four-part yes-no question. Are the following types of roofs? Yes or no. Gable? Yes, that is a type of roof. Hip? Yes, that is a type of roof. Holiday? No, that's not a type of a roof. And butterfly? Yes. Number three, you can determine if a roof vent is leaking if you look for water in the attic. True or false? You can determine if a roof vent is leaking if you look for water in the attic. The answer is true. Number four, true or false? It is appropriate to use an eave vent when s where ceilings are applied directly to the underside of the roof rafters. It is appropriate to use an eave vent where ceilings are applied directly to the underside of the roof rafters. The answer is true. This completes the section on roofing. It also co uh, completes the questions on general building. Listen to this program a couple of times before you test yourself in your home study book. If you do poorly on the test, while, which you take from the home study book, re-listen to this program until you're able to get uh, at least 90%. Best of luck on your test.